Now, uh, the thing is, there are two aspects to our life. One is we have to survive. Survival is not the goal of life, it's the means of life. We have to find some means so that every day we don't have to battle for our food and our shelter. Some things are settled so that we can focus on what we are supposed to do. What are we supposed to do? Let us observe other lives, whether it's a worm or an insect or a tree, what are they striving for? What is a mango tree striving for? Is it tr striving to be a coconut tree? Is it? You're saying yes. Is a mango tree striving to be a coconut tree? No. A mango tree is striving to be a full-fledged mango tree. It's doing everything possible to become a full-fledged mango tree. An earthworm is striving to be a full-fledged earthworm. A grasshopper is trying to be a full-fledged grasshopper. Every creature is trying to reach its full potential. But we know what is a full-fledged mango tree is, we know what is a full-fledged earthworm is, we know what is a full-fledged <coughs> grasshopper is, but we do not know what is a full-fledged human being is. Because some have lived like gods, some have lived like demons, others have oscillated between this and that. Yes? Yes or no? See, I want you to understand in this country, there is no one god that you worship who lived in heaven. All the gods that you worship walk the geography of this land. Yes or no? Every one of them walked the geography of this land. Their mothers had normal birth. They went through all the trials and tribulations that everybody goes through and much more, much more drama in their life than your life, isn't it so? La much, much more drama. But they lived in such a way that no matter what was happening around them, their inner way of being was not disturbed. So we worship them. This means he has become a full-fledged human being. Because being human means you determine your way of being. You can't determine everything that happens in the world. You can determine some things, but you cannot determine everything that happens in the world. You cannot even determine hundred percent what happens in your family, isn't it so? You are admitting that. You cannot. Partly you determine, partly somebody else determines. But what happens within you can determine. We worship these people not because of their success, not because of their wealth, not because of anything, because most of their projects failed. You take Rama, Krishna, whoever, most of their projects failed. Whether failure happened, success happened, terrible things happened to them, within themselves they always remain the same. So we worship them because we understood if a human being has to be like this, he has attained to his full-fledged nature. So this is what you can strive for right now, that you attain to a certain level of equanimity and exuberance, then this being will grow. To what extent? So you need to understand this. The reason why there is so much talk about gods and heaven and stuff is simply because most human beings have not realized the immensity of being human, what it means to be human. Whenever you use the word human, most people say, oh, I am only human. They're always referring to their limitations and whatever compulsions that they have. But being human is the biggest thing on this planet, isn't it? We are the peak of evolution. This is the biggest thing that can happen on this planet, that is to become a human being. We don't know what else elsewhere, but at least on this planet, this is the peak life. So this peak life can go into the necessary awareness, that what we have gone through this already, what you have gathered, your body, your mind, beyond that, what the life process is, you can become conscious of it and determine the very nature of your life and destiny. The very nature of your life and destiny to such an extent, where you're born, how you're born, how you will die, in which womb you're born, all of this you can consciously determine. Even now you're determining but unconsciously. 
Whatever you can do unconsciously, you can do consciously. If you have been born unconsciously, you can be born consciously. If you are go… If, you, if people are dying unconsciously, you can also die consciously. If people have lived unconsciously, you can also live consciously. This is the achievement of a human being, that every dimension of life you can do consciously by choice. I think. We'll… we'll take… this is the last question, we will close this. Swamiji, whatever you told uh, right now, I think it is known to most of the world leaders and the spiritual leader of the world. What is the problem in practicing it for the peace… peace of the entire world? The problem is, uh, you know the concepts but you don't have the tools. When I say you don't have the tools, this is a piece of furniture. There is a screw here in this furniture. I will ask you to unscrew this with your hands. If you are… if you want, I will… Uh, you can also use your teeth. You do this and see. You may lose all your nails, you may lose all your teeth, but still the screw won't come. But if I give you a screwdriver, suddenly you can do this without any effort. So what is missing is the tools. We are who we are on this planet only because of our ability to use the tools. Otherwise, you… you cannot even fight a dog, believe me. Not a lion, I mean this is a tiger state, not a tiger, even a dog you cannot fight because we are able to use the tools we are ruling this planet, isn't it? So as there are physical tools to handle physical situations, there are subjective tools to handle the subjective nature of who you are. The tools are missing, only concepts are floating around. So everybody knows but nothing happens because no tools. So the whole essence of the yogic science is to offer an appropriate tool for each person because if you… if you uh, are… Uh, if uh, driving on a Bajaj scooter, we give you one kind of tool. If you're driving a BMW, we do give another kind of tool because the same tool will not work. Similarly, for every person, the same tool will not work. We have to give an appropriate tool. This has been the science. This is the reason. Though why it is… though it is a science, it has been conducted subjectively because it has to be individual. This is why in the tradition, such a emphasis on a guru because for each person the tool has to be modified. What tool you gave to one person, you give the same to another person, it will not work the same way, it has to be mildly modified, otherwise it will not work. So what is missing is tools, too many concepts, no tools.